Good morning. Uh, this morning's video is in regards to something that uh, I've kind of wanted to do a video on for quite a while. I, after watching a video by uh, Julian Illette, I think is how his name is pronounced, he was doing a, another video where he was messing with his amp miner and he was using an old HP power supply as uh, with a breakout box or a breakout board to power his amp miner. This is kind of I was kind of interested in this because I although I used to have a bunch of HP power supplies I got rid of them but I I do have a couple of Dell power supplies. I have some power supplies for a Dell 2950-2850s models NPS-700AB and I think the NPS-750. The difference is that one's a 700 watt and one's 750 watt. I went on the internet and tried to find a breakout board for these and they were made but nobody seemed to have them anymore except one Bitcoin mining website and I didn't want to pay the amount they did and so I did some searching and found that people had figured out how to you know use these for power supplies now they weren't using them for ant miners they were using them to power chargers for remote controlled vehicles like planes and charging batteries and things like that uh, because these things put out 12 volts at uh, a maximum like this one is 54 amps and the one I'm going to show you here in a second is 60 amps or 62 amps so uh, also that they're relatively inexpensively priced right now on eBay I think right now the cheapest one I can find shipping included uh, was fifteen or sixteen dollars that's only slightly less than a full-on switching power supply a normal one like you would buy for powering LEDs or whatnot uh, those are from twenty two to thirty five dollars so yeah you can get these for about half the price but I was watching a lot of these videos and they seemed overly complicated. There was one video that's over an hour long where the guy takes the entire thing apart to do this and I was pretty much certain that was completely unnecessary and he made it overly complicated. The other thing is there was another video but it was in Spanish and the guy uh, hooked up a uh, potentiometer to control the fan and when I tried to do what he had shown on his video the wires melted so uh, that didn't work out too well and the other question I kept seeing pop up from people who were interested in this was you know, the, there's a an option on these that you can set the fan to go from high to low or low to high whatever now you're supposed to be able to control it to any sp speed you want but I couldn't find any information on exactly how to do that just the one guy with the potentiometer and I think he was doing it wrong and a, a lot of people were asking because you know most of the people were just putting a switch on the fan that would put it from high to low because this thing it makes a lot of noise when it's on high so they wanted to know if the fan, if it would ever, if it was cooled down or heated up, would the fan go to high to low by itself? And I believe the answer is no. And so I wanted to come up with a way that you could get the fan to start out in low and quiet, and then when the unit started heating up, it would switch to high high mode and uh, cool the unit off and then when it cooled it off it would just switch back to low again so this
this is my take on that. And what I'll do first is I'm going to go over the uh, the wiring of this and oh um, so the way this works is that what you would do is if you look on the this diagram you'll see that the pins on the left are marked A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now there are multiple pins on here that are redundant, they do the same thing, but we're just going to use the ones in my diagram. And uh, so when you plug this thing into power, if certain pins aren't jumpered, it starts out in standby mode. Uh, the fan is off and the unit pulls only about 130 milliamps. So to turn it on, so what you do is you are going to take A, sorry, A1 and B6 join those together and short those to ground through a switch for the unit to come out of standby. This unit is always on and so it, if you just let it sit plugged into power it will get very warm actually almost hot. So for the fan control you take B2 and short that to B3 and in this diagram I show it as a switch that's open. Uh, open would be high. The uh, temperature if you're using a thermal fuse or a thermal switch which is what I recommend and I'll show you how that works. When the thermal switch heats up it opens and the fan will go to high and then when it cools off again it closes and the fan will go to low and then you put that in the airstream and uh, it'll control it that way. The six connectors on the right are the power connectors, the output. PB1 through PB3 are all tied together. They are the negative 12 volt, they're just negative ground. And PB4 through PB6, they are also all tied together. They are not separate, they're all together. And they are positive 12 volts. The idea with this is that you could either run individual lines from each of the negatives and each of the positives, and then you could draw about 20 amps from each of those positive connections or you can tie all the positives together and all the negatives together hook up some 6 AWG wire and you could draw about 60 amps through that. I, I don't know how well this power supply can handle running at full power which is 62 amps uh, so you know you, maybe you wouldn't want to run it all the, at full power all the time, but it can handle it. Uh, I went and found out what the female connector, the male connector is on the back of this device, and the female connector, I believe it's the female, yeah, the female connector, I found the part number for that. It is 51915-0501. Lima Foxtrot and it's made by Amphenol FCI Foxtrot Charlie India. Uh, you can get them from Mauser I think they're about 750. Uh, Digikey 
shows them on their site but they don't have any in stock and I've not found any on eBay so let's go over what I did with this and what I used and how I did this without taking anything apart uh, first thing is I used what uh, called DuPont connectors. These are one side is a female socket and the other side is male and I just plugged them in to the pins oops the pins on the back of this and then soldered wires to the other ends ran them down the side to a switch and then on the front I have a thermal switch that I pulled from an old NICAD battery. Um, almost every older NICAD battery will have one of these in them. Uh, this one is 45 degrees C, which is about 114 degrees. Uh, I had actually ordered some from eBay. They haven't, they're, they're probably going to arrive the day I'm making this video. But I found this one while going through my stuff and um, tested it, and it works. Uh, anyways, um, this only took me a, about an hour or two to, to put together. I used a, a switch I already had. It doesn't need to be a high amperage switch. This one's like two or three amps. Uh, and I think that's it. Let's uh, power this thing up. Let's see if I can get this in the screen. We got all these ridiculously heavy wires here. So let's show you that. When this thing is plugged in, you can see that it draws 130 milliamps with off, and on this switch, I just move it to on, and it'll take it out of standby. And you can hear the fan or maybe hear the fan. And you can see the power usage jumped up to 160 milliamps. It's about 14 watts. Um, this is normal behavior for these. Um, I used to have a, a Dell server in my other workroom that was on. I had left it plugged in and one day I came in and touched the uh, top of the where the power supplies were and it was quite warm. Um, so they, 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 they draw power when they're not turned off. It would be possible probably to put a true power switch on this but you would have to open it up probably snip one of the, the the hot connection from the power cord and then put a switch and mount it up here somewhere. Oh, and these things uh, which they have on the tops, fronts, and sides or tops and sides are just to make good contact with the case of the server. They're copper and sharp and they're not necessary and they come out pretty easily um, let me unplug power from this so I don't want it falling in there and shorting something out so they just clip on and then you can remove them so anyways let's let's test out this thermal sensor. I don't have, I'm not going to put this thing on a load and try to heat it up because that would take forever. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my soldering iron and just apply heat to this directly and when it gets to 114 degrees you should hear the, the fan kick in. I have the soldering iron uh, turned down a bit because I don't want it melting something. This is taking a while because it has to heat up the uh, there it goes. Oh, starting to. Almost. Uh, it's got to heat up the sensor plus the uh, metal around it. And it's got air blowing over it. There it goes. Oops. Put a little solder on it so the heat transfers better. So there you see it heated up and then when it cooled off again um, it uh, goes back to the low uh, temperature or low fan setting. Now the thing about um, this is this is 114 degrees Fahrenheit normally closed switch and it may be too high of a temperature um, because the temperature inside this thing is always going to be hotter than the air coming out of it and so it might require something lower like a hundred and like a 40 C or a 35 C which would be 95 to 104 degrees um, The uh, because the, like I said the temperature inside here could be 120, 130, 140 degrees but the air coming out the back might be 110 so uh, anyways as you can see that all works uh, the reason I did it this way is that if I decided I wanted to use this as a uh, power supply again well I just have to clip off all this stuff and unplug it and and it's back to back to the way it was so uh, that's it thanks for watching